Welcome to the coffee shop, everybody. This is your host and barista, Eric, and I am here today creating a indicator with chat GPT. Okay, my brain and AI getting together. You better be liking this video below and subscribe to this channel. This is for my special people. So in today's video, let's find out what happens when an AI sits down at the coffee table with the master barista. Yeah, you know, it's it's a woman because, you know, it's always causing problems. <sighs> Does that tell you a little bit about my history? <laughs> anyway, welcome to the barista, everybody. Uh, we're going to get into something crazy today. I am going to create an indicator using chat GPT, and I'm going to do a few things with it here. I'm going to create an indicator first off of a common strategy that uh, people use in trading called the high low breakout strategy. When ChatGPT gives me back the code and I'm going to try my best to edit the code and turn it into something that looks nice, uh, you know, because it's going to be very based. And then I'm going to show you how to use that uh, indicator. So again, the three things they are create an indicator using it chat gpt correct the code from chat gpt into what i know works and then i'm going to show you how to use the indicators let's get into today's madness right here on the coffee shop thanks sit down and i will show you how to brew on my screen i i have chat gpt open in the background i'm just gonna say something it's gonna spit out some code uh, let's go to chat gpt i use a voice to text on my computer so i'm gonna talk into the screen I'm going to talk into the computer. There is a strategy used in trading commonly known as the high low channel for traders to use as their entry and exit. The high of the channel is usually the high closing price and the low of the channel is usually plotted from the low closing price. Both the high and the low are usually the average of either closing price. And when current price exceeds the upper part or the lower part of this channel, it is an indication that the trend is either bullish or bearish above or below the channel. My problem with this strategy is that there is no determining factor of a midline or zero point or good price. I would like to create an indicator using PineScript version five for trading view that will be plotting this high and low channel based off of an RSI calculation. The indicator will also be using the 50 level of the RSI as the midline which would be the determining factor of either bullish or bearish momentum. Let's originally test this out using the high minus the close of the bullish candles and the low minus the close of the bearish candles separately to give us the high and low of the channel. There we go. Pretty lengthy. Uh, the interesting thing that you need to do with ChatGPT is you need to give it as much detail as possible because otherwise it's going to spit out code. It'll be flat out wrong or you won't get anything of what you're needing. And you'll just be going through the same loop over and over again. Correct the error. Ask it to fix it. It doesn't work. All this stuff. Let's see what the code is that it gave me. And here is what it gave me. Since this is based off of the RSI, what I'm going to do is first things first, Let's go to the indicators, right? I'm going to type in relative, right? Uh, I'm going to take the relative strength index. And all I really want is the code. I already see that TradingView has updated the relative strength strength index. And I see that they did something very special here. Look at what they've done. See this little green area starting right in there. So look, they've got a green area here for overbought, right? And they've got a red area. They must have. There should be a red area for oversold. Yep, there it is right there. See, a little red area right there. Cool. I'm going to leave that in the code. Let's see how relevant that is to what we end up using. So like I said, all I want is the code of the RSI. So let me just go and grab that. I need the moving average part. I don't need the whole beginning part. I take this and I don't need that anymore. Right. So let's delete this right there. I started creating a blank indicator. Let's go GPT. How about that? Under my scripts for my scripts, you can't see it because it's in my system. That's it. Here it is. Coffee shop crypto RSI high low versus chat GPT. That's what I'm calling this script for now. And maybe in the end, we will change the name of it to call it, you know, the algo something or the AI trader. So, so here it is. You can see this is really plotting nothing on here. And the code is blank, right? Let's go in. I want to put the RSI in here 
Okay, so we have the RSI, Relative Strength Index, is plotting in there right now. And I'm basically just copying it into my system. And now I want to... Now, I'm going to take the code that ChatGPT gave me. I'm going to put it on here. Okay, right here. There we go. All right. So, not there. Uh, we need this and this. Okay, there we go. Here, there we go. That's what it gave me. And <laughs> it's still wrong. Okay. <sighs> I love you, ChatGPT. No. There's an error here because um, it didn't complete the code the right way. So, I don't like any of this. Let's plot this on the chart. Um, I'm going to take this out. Calculate the average of the difference for the bullish candles. Okay, I already know how to do that. I'm going to do that myself because it didn't do it right. Uh, here's more of the calculation right there that needs to be corrected. Uh, the average difference. We're not plotting anything right now. That's it. So basically, there's three lines of code that are relevant to what I was asking for. That's it. If you don't know PineScript, then you will simply be in this endless loop of just failures. So let's see <clears throat> what we can do here. Save it. I'm going to put it on the chart. Make sure that the overlay is false. Yes, we're good. All right. And you can see that uh, there is nothing from my indicator, my section from ChatGPT. Nothing is being plotted. Uh, what if I just kind of create a plot right here? Plot difference. We'll just call that difference. I just want to see what this gives me for now and save that should give me another line on here nope undeclared value green oops sorry <coughs> there see it didn't even get the color right all right so this tells me a, a, a little bit more of what i need to know so right now this is giving me the high minus the close it's not giving me the low minus the close it's also not giving me uh it didn't give me what i wanted actually if i turn off everything about the rsi this is plotting using zero as the midline. And I specifically said I want to use the 50 as the midline. So it's not even doing what I asked it to do. Like here, upper band, middle band, background, uh, 30, Bollinger Bands. Uh, this is my plot. There's a Bollinger Bands. There's the moving average and the RSI. Great. There. And you can see if I put a zero on this, it's using zero as the midline. Instead, I asked it for... 50 as the midline and that's all the way over here it's just flat out not working so let's let's make this something special uh also i see it's very jagged here so it's probably going to give me another kind of issue let's move on just just see what kind of madness we can make out of this right so first things first i need to make sure that the rsi is being plotted at the 50 level and let me go into the code and make a few corrections of something here right I want the moving average to be this amber color that I always use, right? I'm gonna make the RSI be like this, yellow, okay? Uh, I need the, <clears throat> the moving average has to be there, okay? Uh, because I want it to be at the zero level, which means if it's using 50 currently, then I have to subtract 50. 50 minus 50 is zero. So now this is saying, hey, plot at the zero level, right? Um, see, okay, so RSI upper band. If I'm subtracting 50, then all these lines have to change. And uh, this is for the fill function. I know what this does. Uh, I don't want to use zero as the midline, um, as the bottom. We use minus five. And then uh, I'm going to use plus five over here and minus 20. So now it should be a nice little update to the code. Kind of do that. Everything should be layering over each other. Yes, good. So now you can see that uh, the high low, the high close, I should say, it's not the high low. It's it's how the high and the close are moving from the uh, RSI. And you can see like, here's the RSI and here's where the high of the RSI was, right? And here's where the average of the RSI is. Now, what I need is also a low one too, right? So I have one for the high and the close. I need one for the low and the close. The moving average is gonna stay, but I see how, again, it's still very jagged. So the cool thing is it's telling me when it's when it's positive and negative, right? That way you know you're bullish or bearish. So already it's starting to look good. Let's go into uh, what? I need to make a, a low minus the close, right? But actually this is wrong. The RSI high, it's using the RSI. This should be the high, okay, that's good. And the close, I need the low. Okay, there we go. And this is gonna be low right there. 
So the difference, we're going to call it bull difference, right? There. And we'll call the other one bear difference. This is going to be the RSI. Hmm. This actually needs to be the close minus the low. It's backwards. There we go. We've got bull difference. Right, which is going to be green. Okay, and then we've got bear difference. We're going to make that red just for the sake of keeping things copacetic. Uh, make it a little bit light. There we go. So we can actually see it on the background. And this one, to make this one a little bit light so we could be, see it on the green background, see the light one on the red background. There you go. Let's see. <clears throat> the close minus the low, the high minus the close. Let's see what we got. Nope. There. I should have a new line showing up now. Yes, I do. And again, it's just really, really jagged, right? I'm not really appreciating how this is coming out just yet. Let's get rid of the moving average and the RSI. And you can see how it's just really, really, there's really no uh, confluence here. It really doesn't tell you anything of what you need. Like you're in the red. When do you get, uh, but it's just, just so many entries. Your low is down here, right? You enter again, like there's too many entries. Okay. You got one here, you got one right here and here. Right. Uh, there's, that's just all entries. So something still needs to change here. Uh, let's just kind of take a look at um, what needs to be done. So I don't need to change anything about the original code. I need to calculate the difference of the bullish and bearish candles, right? I need to tell it what is a bullish or bearish candle. Your right bull candle is when the close is pretty than the open. And a bear candle is when the close is less than the open. Right. Bearish, bullish. There you go. I have an idea. I don't need... I don't need the RSI high and close. It's really jagged. I need to smooth this out. Um, so let me, first let's try this. Let's try this first. This actually has to be the close with the RSI low there. So you need the high minus the close and then the close minus the low because you're subtracting here. See where we are? Didn't change anything. And I think it's because I'm, well, I am right. Bull difference. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I think I need to tell it what a bullish candle is and a bearish. So a bullish difference, I want to do that here and there and there. So to find the bearish difference, you take the close minus the low, but the candle has to be a bearish candle. So I can't do that. <clears throat> that doesn't work. Hmm. Interesting. So I can't do that. Not a big deal. And I think it's wrong anyway. It's really jagged. And that's just kind of throwing me off. I'm not okay with any of that. I don't like how jagged it is. Uh, I, 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 need to make, I need to make a change here because it's just not working out for me. How about instead of using the RSI, we use the bullish difference is going to be... Ah, I think I got it. I think I got it. Let me try this. How about bull difference is actually going to be against the moving average? So this needs to be RSI, M, A, right there. The bullish difference is the RSI moving average minus the RSI high. And then the bearish difference, right, is going to be the RSI, M, A, where is it? M, A, minus the RSI low, there, okay? Because I'm really going after the average minus the high and the low. That's what I want. Uh, and that probably means I don't need to create another set of moving errors. Let's see. Here, 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 there. Okay. Let's load this up. That's a little bit better, right? But I don't see the moving average. And it's because they're plotting way out somewhere else. There they are. They're over here. And they're minus 50. So they don't need to be minus 50. That's minus. That's minus. So I need to change that so that the moving average is also being subtracted, suppose. I think so. All right, so let me see. Let's go over here. There, so this is minus 50 right here, right? Plus 50, okay, and plus 50. Now I'm doing this to this area. I wanna separate this from that. Otherwise, it's just gonna take the high and add 50. I don't wanna do that. I wanna take the calculation, and I think that's gonna give me a move in the right direction. Let's see, kinda, kinda. I think I went backwards with it, right? Is that what I did? I think, pull it up. Boom. Oh, that's why I was wrong here. Okay. There. So I don't need to do this if I do that the right way. Let's find out. I'm definitely missing something here. I need to make a smooth moving average. Bull diff 
SMA, right? And a bear diff. Bear diff SMA. Now, these are created by TA SMA, right? Of the bull difference bear difference right i can plot those and that's it so plot bull difference bear difference let's try this now should give me the same thing uh so they're upside down now I'm going to take this, let's see, line plot. Okay, I'm going to take all of this, midline plot. I'm going to move this down to the bottom. Let me just do a quick edit here. Okay, we got that now. Okay. So, there. Okay. Uh, so, this looks like it's correct now. This looks more appropriate. Let's remove the moving average because I don't need it for here. Uh, the RSI, where's the RSI? It's right there. Bullish and bearish, okay. Bullish and bearish, okay. Now, what I want to do here is I want to, I don't know, let's let's make this in uh, columns, right? Let's make this columns. I like it so far. Uh, let me see. Bullish difference, bearish difference. Okay, we're good so far. Mm hmm. So, bearish difference. The red part's on the top, <laughs> the, the green part's on the bottom. So, that's kind of messed up, right? Um, yeah. So, let's fix that too. All right. Bullish difference, bearish difference. Why is that like that? Hmm. It's giving you a nice oscillation between the two, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we're in the yellow. All right. Okay. We're good here. Okay. Let's just kind of reverse these. This will be yellow. This will be red. All right. And what am I missing here? Something's not. The Bollinger Bands are off. Bollinger. Okay. Not using Bollinger Bands. It's fine. Background fill for the Bollinger Bands. Over point over soul. We're going to leave that. I'm gonna turn off the RSI. I made the R I, I ruined the RSI. I just grabbed the wrong one. So that's yellow. Uh, bearish difference is gonna be yellow. Bullish difference is gonna be red. There. There we go. So now what else do I need to do? The RSI is not a column. This is gonna be like that. Okay. Now let's fade this out just a little bit so we can actually see what's happening. There we go. And maybe turn it into an area with breaks. Area with breaks. Now we have a little something different. Uh, I need to put the RSI on there. Hang on. It's got some fading shading going on in here that I want to address. Uh, I need this color. Right. I need that color here. There. But I don't want it to be so faded looks like right there all right so now you can see that a little bit better here I want this color here there and we're gonna bring that in a little bit too there so okay so at this point you can see that both of the uh, high and low color let's kind of let's just turn off the over over the gradient right there let's just turn it off so, it looks like it's ready.